Hello and welcome to Nerd Central. Today we will be taking a look at this, Doctor Who, The Light at the End, the 50th anniversary audio from Big Finish. Will it be a cracker? Will it be better than the day of the Doctor? Or will there be no light at the end for the Doctor? Well, let's find out, shall we? Now, something that makes this release special when compared to most other releases, in my opinion, is the fact that the bo that the audio itself doesn't just come. Well, you can get it in a standard, you know, CD, uh, but that's no fun, is it? So I ended up getting the limited edition, which comes in a slip case. So it's really good, a sturdy, hard slip case, which will stand out on your shelf. Which that could be a problem for some people, because I know some people really don't like what's it called having uh, something to stand out on the shelf, but mm, I'm not that bothered. Anyway, on to the presentation of the front of the box. Uh, I really like the front, to be honest, because it, it just looks so cool. I mean, as well as the 50, the 50 Years logo at the top, the Doctor Who you know, logo with the sort of old-fashioned vortex in, uh, then there's all of the Doctors standing on a broken piece of the TARDIS at the bottom. Which, if you've actually listened to this story, then you'll know why. Uh, and they all just look brilliant, don't they? I mean, if only time travel were possible, so we could actually get all of these on screen at once, that would just be so wonderful. Uh, anyway, and then on the bottom right, there is the Doctor Who 50 Years logo, which is mostly standard on all 50 uh, items, which uh, I guess it helps you recognise it's from the 50th. Then on the left is the Big Finish logo, which it's a Big Finish logo, there's nothing really special about that. Uh, <laughs> and then there's the starring list at the, bo list at the bottom, which has Tom Baker, Peter Davison, Colin Baker, Sylvester McCoy and Paul McGann. All brilliant as in their role as the Doctors. So, let's have a look at the back. The presentation continues, in my opinion, to be really good at the back as well. Uh, we have the Doctor Who 50th logo again. We have the 50 Years Tardis logo. And then we have the, by, no, the blurb by, written and directed by Nicholas Bleak's The Light at the End. Which I have to say, this is a brilliant story and this proves my point. Why the hell is he not in writing an episode for the actual proper series of Doctor Who? I mean, don't you think they proved himself for like doing eight years of the Dalek voices as well as what's it called, writing for uh, most of the big finish range? Do you think Stephen Moffat or the people in charge would be like, hmm, maybe we should let him have a go? Well, anyway, apart from that, uh, the blurb reads, November 23rd, 1963 proves to be a significant day in the lives of all eight Doctors. It is the one day, day that Bob Dovey's life is ripped apart. It also, it's also a day that sets in motion the catastrophic chain of events which forces the first eight incarnations of the Doctor to fight for their very existence as a mysterious insidious chaos unfolds within the TARDIS the barriers of time break apart. From suburban England through worn torn alien landscapes into a deadly artificial dimension, all these got doctors and their companions must struggle against the power of an unform unformidable alien technology. From the very beginning, it is clear that the Master is somehow involved. By the end, for the doctors, there may only be darkness. Now, how can that not grab your attention immediately? I mean, if you hear that and you don't want to listen to this, then... I don't know, there's something wrong with <laughs> Then it's just the cast list, which we'll get back to later because it's not the actual full cast list. This is not actually everybody that's involved. There are more people, but I'll get onto that later. Then there's the legal stuff, uh, as well as the BBC logo, the Doctor, no, the big Finnish logo, and some disc thing. <laughs> and then for collectors, this will be the real interesting part. There's actually... Uh, the number of your limited edition and mine, as you can see, is 3,889 out of 10,000, which it's not right, no number, but I'm happy about. I'm happy. So anyway, now we'll take a look at the book inside. About the box set I really do like, what some people don't like, I've heard on other reviews, is that the discs are held in these sort of like sleeve things. 
Uh, and I've heard some people say that it can be quite hard to get out. Yes, they can be quite a little bit hard sometimes, but I think they look like a cool way to store them. And like how, like they say, Doctor Who, like at the end part one, and it has it in the actual purple vortex like on the front. I think that is a really cool idea. And also, some other bits of the book I think are really cool is how there's different sections on each character uh, that's made to the story and how they impact, like, the story like let's say there's one here on Straxis and his report like what him like as if he's reporting back to the council of the time lords which is very cool and then it goes through each doctor and their part what they played in the event that happened in the light at the end and it's really cool uh, and it's really cool there's some brilliant artwork I especially like the piece of the master Oh, I'm just mentioning the master. The master is played absolutely fantastically by what's it called, Jeffrey Beavers, I think. Yeah, and I think he played him in Cube of Track, and so he's really good. Uh, another then, if you then after the photos of that, there's uh, some photos of the cast members. There's one with all of the doctors that feature in this story, well, the ones that are alive. Then there's uh, a picture of most of the companions in this story. Then there's a few pictures of like the extra people who like are cameos, which is really cool, all in these like picture frames and that. And then uh, it says the full credits, this is what I mentioned earlier. There's a lot more people than it said before, it tells you the full credits here, like who, who the actors are, who help behind the scenes, all sorts. And then there's uh, a briefing on all the other discs, there's the, ma the making of the light at the end, where they look at how it was made, which is really cool. It's in depth, like you have interviews of all the doctors and that, saying their parts, and one with Jeffrey Beavers, which is really good, and like Nicholas Briggs and all sorts. Then there's the This Is Big Finish uh, CD, which is basically where they, it's like Nicholas Briggs would call in like the process of how he got Big Finish started and all the effort and how it's been to work at it, which is cool. And then there's a brief for like The Revenants, which is like the Companion Chronicle that comes with this. I have not, uh, what's it called, listened to that yet, but I will do another day and I might review that later on, so who knows. And then there's a little, like, but, uh, what's it called, uh, blurb for that. And then there's just the sleeves again for the making of the light at the end. This is Big Finish, and then the Revenants. And that's it for the inside of the book, and now I'll talk about my opinions of the story. Now, on to my opinions of Light of the End itself, the actual story. And I have to say, in my opinion, it is one of the best Big Finish audios I've listened to, on a par with Dark Eyes, I'd say. And, uh, well, the acting is just superb from everybody. Tom, Paul, Peter, Colin, Sylvester, everybody's just brilliant. Even the companions, especially Sarah Sutton as Nissa, in my opinion. She does a really good performance here. Uh, the pacing's quite good as well of the actual story, like, there's not a lot of slow bits. Uh, there are some parts, like, the bit with Bob Dobby at the beginning seems a bit slow, but it doesn't last for long, it just kicks into the theme tune, and on the subject of that, the music in this is brilliant, be it the theme tune at the beginning, which seems like an amalgamation of all of them, which is real cool, uh, just type it in online, big finish, like, at the end theme. Uh, the music that they used for that scene, spoiler later on, like when they were about to all time man, uh, the Master's TARDIS is bloody awesome in my opinion. And yeah, there's a lot of really cool music in this. Uh, speaking of guest stars, the Master, played by Jeffrey Beavers, is an absolute... I can't describe it, it's just brilliant to watch and listen to. It just sounds so sinister, like the old Master, so knowing what he's doing. But also gets that element of madness, like a bit uh, in the Deadly Assassin, how the Master was so obsessed with, you know, like wanting to kill the Doctor, and that it was so cool, and he's so good as the Master, it's so brilliant. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of good things about it. Is there any bad things about it? Uh, any bad things? Not a lot that I can think of. One bad thing is some companions do get a little short change. Like uh, with Perry, you get a few lines with her and then she just disappears. <laughs> Literally, if you know, if you've watched this. And also, the 
the first three Doctors, they have quite a big role in it, but because they're obviously not alive, they're not like as predominant as like the other Doctors. And speaking of Doctors, if people don't like Colin Baker from the TV show, listen to him in Big Finish audios, you'll love him. I've heard him in this, and I'm like, I want to go pick up some more of his audios now, because I'm like, you sound brilliant, man. I mean, you sound so cool. I mean, I've always liked Colin Baker, but, you know. Right, so, what would I rate it? I'd rate it a solid 9 out of 10. Yeah, 9 out of 10. It's really brilliant, really good. Uh, shame at the original actors for the first three you want alive, but what can you do? Uh, I would say this is better than the Day of the Doctor, because... Uh, unlike the Day of the Doctor, it doesn't have, like, the Zygon plot where that was a bit... Just felt a bit tacked on to me towards the rest of it. Alright, so that's the end of this. Uh, I'm new to doing this reviewing, so comment down what you think below. Comment down how I could improve it. And thanks for sticking with me, because I know I do rattle on a bit. People always tell me to shut up. <laughs> uh, some other good channels I can recommend, just to say. The Doctor's Assistant 1. Uh, Pertree Smith 11 and Who Addicts Art oh, and TJ Productions is quite cool. So, goodbye from Nerd Central. See you in whatever review next. Bye.